welcome back to another episode of Project Supercar. Now this is part two, following on from the part one episode, uh, where we covered the braking system and the ABS system. And in this episode, we will find out whether or not I actually fitted ABS to my DIY supercar that I built from an old Audi estate that I only paid £300 for. Now just to recap, from the last episode we went over some of the engineering issues you will face if you try and fit ABS to your own DIY supercar or kit car project. Like changing the wheelbase and track of the car and using different ABS sensors and two wheels that have different numbers of teeth which are somewhere in here. Now we're all caught up, I can go back in time and finish editing this video. Or maybe I should go into the future where I've already edited it and I'm munching on a bacon butty. Now on older cars, the ABS sensors just controlled the ABS. However, on more modern cars, the ABS sensors can also activate and control any stability control systems you have, and it can even control the speedo on your dashboard. Take the BMW E90 series. They use the rear ABS sensors to control the speedo. Ask me how I know this. Hmm. Well, I had a bit of a faulty ABS um, issue with my BM and the, the light was flickering. And put the computer in and it turns out one of the rear sensors was beginning to fail. So, I thought, I know, just buy some on eBay, good old eBay. And I bought some Chinese knockoff ones, I know, I know what you're saying. And I fitted them drove down the road and the ABS light was permanently on and the speedo didn't work. So yeah, it actually controls the speedo. I, I did fix that problem, I bought some correct OEM BMW ones which were about five times more expensive, but it did sort out my ABS problem and yeah, the speedo worked as well. So, if you're gonna use a more modern donor car for your DIY supercar build, you're probably going to find that the ABS system is intertwined with the wiring loom and uh, the speedo and the gauges and the rest of the systems of your car, including traction control and stability control. This means it's going to be much more difficult and probably much more expensive to use or to sort out within your DIY project. Now I was quite lucky with my first donor car, which is, as you should know by now, is an Audi A6 E4. Because when I stripped that car down, I discovered the ABS was separate to the rest of the wiring loom and it was separate to the ECU. Great. Somewhere in here is what remains of that ABS system. Ah! I labelled it. ABS CPU. Not really any good to me, but um, at least it was separate from the uh, rest of the car loom. Okay, I was hoping to show you the ABS loom, but I just remembered. Um, I sacrificed it when I extended the loom on the, on the prototype because obviously the engine is now in the back and I had to extend the engine gloom and all that sort of stuff but we'll cover that in another episode. So here's the ABS pump from the Audi A6 2.7T donor car. Now I haven't fully stripped it down yet so I don't know if the ABS system is separate to the wiring loom and the ECU or not. We'll find out when I dig a little bit deeper. 
But if we go over what we've learned, the BMW and the Audi hubs have different sized teeth wheels, they probably have different sensors, and the wheelbase and the track, well, that's different as well. So, am I going to be fitting ABS to my DIY supercar? No, I don't think so. Now that we've learned all about ABS, I don't really need this. Oops. One good thing with an ABS system, now that I'm not going to use it on my DIY supercar, is it takes care of any brake compensation or biasing the car needs. So on this car, I had to fit a manually adjustable brake bias, which is deep inside here. There we go. Oh, there we go. There it is. Not the best place for it, but um, this is where the uh, regulations get in the way. Um, according to UK IVA standards and regulations, I can't fit this brake bias inside the car. In other words, the driver isn't allowed to access this brake bias while sitting at the controls, at the steering wheel, that sort of stuff. So it has to live here inside the engine compartment. So I couldn't use the ABS, but I could use the servo, the master cylinder, the reservoir, and the clutch master cylinder from the original donor car, which is the Audi A6 C4. I'll bring the camera in so you can take a closer look. All right, let's take a closer look. This is the servo, and this is the vacuum line, reservoir, this hose here goes all the way along into, hopefully you can see that, that is the brake master cylinder. So yeah, there is a uh, vacuum line, it goes through here, connected underneath, down this hose, through the center of the car, and up here into the manifold. Now one problem with using a mix and match braking system for your DIY supercar is if you fit oversized large front calipers because you may find that the volume of brake fluid in those calipers is much more than your master cylinder is designed to push, meaning your brake pedal may travel farther than you realize. Now the good thing with having BMW and Audi brakes on this thing means I can dip into the OEM and aftermarket parts bin. Loads to choose from. Here's an example of some great performance brake discs and calipers being fitted to a BMW M3. Well, the Swamp certainly had its way with the uh, brake system, PT. Look at, I know. Look at the back of this rotor. She nasty. It is full skank spec. Glad to see the, these going in the dump, or I guess to the metal recycler, since we're environmentally friendly car guys here. And by the way, we should mention that the brake system on this car is one of its real Achilles heels. We've got a bunch of buddies that have tracked these cars for years and they were always having huge brake fade issues on the stock brakes. So they've all had to go to big brake kits of various types. Some work better than others. And as we'll show you momentarily, momentarily we've gone with what we consider to be the, the best in the business. And this stuff is also very heavy. So we're not only gonna gain performance, but we're also gonna save weight by going to this new StopTech C43 kit. So this is, this is their competition brake kit, as they call it. And it uses this C43 caliper, which is extraordinarily light. Oh, and it's a work of art, beautifully too. made. Goodness. Like, look at all these little pockets and stuff where they're taking weight out of it. It uses a uh, 44 mil and 38 mil piston size. And it is just gorgeous. In fact, you can see these, I think, or similar calipers to these being made in our factory tour at StopTech. So 
go check that video out if you want to see more about how they manufacture these in America. And the reason we've thrown the uh, braided uh, stainless steel brake line on here, which comes with the kit, is because we wanted to weigh this versus the factory caliper, which is remarkable. These only weigh 4.4 pounds. These weigh 12 pounds, Insane. which is kind of mind blowing. So a huge amount of savings there with obviously the stiffness and the performance advantages that come with, you know, reduced uh, unsprung mass and all that good stuff. So huge improvement in, in performance and weight there. And with this uh, true two piece floating uh, rotor, we're also saving a surprising amount of weight. These were two pounds lighter than the factory rotor, despite the fact that they have a lot more thermal mass where you want it out in the rotor disc area. So if you look at the difference between these two, both in, uh, well, it, the most sort of informative is looking at the sides here where you can see just how much more material there is both in the outer faces and how much uh, better the venting is. It's got, uh, you know, the angled vent so it'll move air through the rotors much better to cool them. And obviously with the aluminum center, you save weight in that area where you want to save it. And obviously we are also going with StopTech's, uh, what are the SR33 race pads. So this is a proper racing uh, brake pad, this being a proper racing brake kit. And if we find these to be too dusty or too noisy on the street, we'll obviously swap in maybe their sport pads for the street and just swap these in for the racetrack. But we're going to try them out on the street because why not? I've actually found that some race pads work surprisingly well on the street and these may be, may be the case. And just like that, man, we got big brakes on the front of this thing and they look very Unbelievable. sexy. Obviously, we will report back to you in future episodes when we actually test these out performance-wise, but uh, very exciting to have some real brakes on this car because like we talked about earlier, this thing really does suffer from woefully underperforming stock brakes. So that's the braking system and ABS delete on my DIY supercar. So I'm going to call this an episode, so thanks for watching and I'm going to put the wheels back on this thing. Bye for now.